Hey, welcome. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at a little bit of how do we uh, solve quadratic equations. Now, there's actually three different ways that are very distinct uh, ways that we solve quadratics. The easiest one is the one that we're focusing on today, which is solving from factored form when someone hands you a factored problem. So let's start with uh, just a couple of quick questions. So first thing to note is we like to call this the zero product property. And one of the properties is that if you ever have a situation where you have the product of two numbers, A and B, where the answer is zero, the only way that that's possible is that if A is zero or if B is zero, or possibly, I guess, if both were equal to zero simultaneously. Um, that there's no other value where you can do that with mathematics when you have a product. Zero is the only one that gives you that particular story. So if someone hands you a problem that is already in factored form, what we are actually doing is we're actually specifically saying that you have a product. I have x minus 4 right here that is being multiplied by x plus 7. So again, if this product right here is being multiplied and I get zero, then either x minus four is explicitly zero or x plus seven is explicitly zero. And so the only way that this could be true is if x is four. Now, keep in mind, I could add four to both sides, or if you could just think about it, four take away four would make this portion zero. And similarly, over here, if we subtracted 7 from both sides, or you just think about it, you would know that negative 7 would also make that go to 0. Now, as it turns out, I wanted to go one more little thing over here, because I have Desmos ready to go. But if you look at Desmos, notice that I have x minus 4 times x plus 7. We have our two values right here, and those are actually going to be known as the zeros or the roots of that uh, parabola. And so because we don't need a lot of points to make a nice parabola, this is an alternative way of doing that. And if you took those two roots that are there, which is 4 comma 0, and uh, let's see, let me label that, and um, negative 7 comma 0 that we already listed, and I, and I labeled that, a nice thing that you can do is if you take 4 and negative 7 and add them together, you get negative 3. And if we cut that in half, because I'm finding the average of those numbers, if I take negative 7 and positive 4 and I average them, I would get negative 3 halves. So look what happens if I type in x equals negative 3, oops, negative 3 halves. That would be my line of symmetry, my axis of symmetry. Now, we actually calculated that in class using opposite b over 2a before. Uh, but this is an alternative way of finding that. And you'll notice this spot right down here where those two things intersect, that would be my vertex. Uh, not a very nice vertex for this particular problem, but that wasn't the point. But if we can get the factored versions um, of those zeros, it's a really useful way of coming up with a nice graph. So let's go back to my, um, my examples. My second example right here is that either x plus 6 is 0. So notice we've got this x plus 6 is 0. Or we could say that x minus 11 is 0. And so the only way that this would be true in this case it would be if x is negative 6 or if x is positive 11. So in this particular graph, if we looked at it, we would see that it would cross the x-axis at both negative 6 and at positive 11. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our second graph. So here we go. So if I turned off these previous examples and we did this one, we could see again that this one crossed at negative 6. There it is. And it also crossed at positive 11. So you see those two places. And again, if we wanted to, we could add those together. 11 and negative 6 add together to be 5. And if I cut that in half, I would get 5 halves. And that would be my axis of symmetry. That would be the line that goes right down the middle of my Problem. So I won't do that over and over again, but uh, I thought that was worthy of taking a look. So back to our questions. 
sometimes you end up with coefficients. Now, again, in this particular case, um, the orange value is the easy one to find. And sometimes we get that um, where that's the easy one. But the way that that right factor would be equal to zero would be happening if X is nine. But the left factor set equal to zero is a little harder. So remember, if we're trying to solve this problem for X, I would have to add four to both sides. And then I'd divide both sides by three and I'd get four thirds. So the place where this graph would cross the X axis is at four thirds and at nine. Now those are not quite as nice. But one of the things that you'll notice if we look at these problems is the, the these numbers here where there's no coefficient are very nice and easy. But on this one, you'll notice that there was a negative four and it turned into a positive four. And so in this case, that positive five is going to become a negative five halves. And the reason why, of course, is when you set it equal to zero, you bring the five across, and then we're going to have to divide both sides by two. So you're always going to switch this sign and then divide by that one. So that makes this final answer one fifth for this guy and negative 13 halves for that guy. And this would have terrible axis of symmetry because I have to add those two fractions together and divide by two, and that would not be very pleasant, but it's doable. Okay, I will see you guys back in class. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll see you later. Goodbye.